when we think of somebody who is a financial criminal mastermind, who is devious, calculating, cunning, what we don't think of is a young, talkative, energetic YouTuber. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. You want views like this, you want the dream life. And you can totally do it. Are you tired of being poor? Today we're going to show you how to make millions. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make quick money in one day. Okay, so I'll tell you, I'll tell everyone right here, right now, how to get fucking rich. So I was 18 years old when I made my first million dollars. People to put their money into fake cryptocurrency investments. I pretty much lost all my money. Y'all, I just lost it all. Fucking brat! My wife's gonna kill me if it keeps going down. It's okay. If it's okay. It was hard because we lost everything. I was raised in a poor family in Ukraine. Crazy 90s, the collapse of Soviet Union, hard times. Since I was a small child, I thought about making money and how to get out of poverty. Then I moved to a big city. I quickly became a corporate worker, 10 hours a day, 6 days a week. You know, family, first key, first company, but still 60 hours working week. When I got my first paycheck, my desire to multiply my hard-earned money only increased. I quickly realized that if I wanted to have any kind of work-life balance, I had to find ways to make passive income and start investing. How to make 100x gains. What you can do, trust me. And what I do is I help people build income and create wealth. You will be rich. Let's go and give me a like and a subscribe if you love this content. Years later, I realized that I was a part of an audience that could easily fall into the trap of investment gurus at first. Immigrants, low-income workers, teenagers, and other vulnerable segments of the US population are typically their first followers. Gurus are constantly all invited. All my best ideas and strategies. You hear their Not alluring and promising voices. What I do is I help people build income and create wealth. Before you know it, you end up watching one of their videos on YouTube and it seems to make sense. You might even be about ready to try their advice. And this is the first step. I only want to try nothing more. That's typically the first trap people fall into. That often leads to the financial investment corners of YouTube and to financial experts, investment advisors, wealth management mentors, and the investment community in general. And all these young, smiling, charming financial YouTubers look harmless on the surface. Maybe a bit awkward when they tell you what to do with your money, but generally okay. And we end up falling down their rabbit hole because we don't see the real danger. That's how our brain works. A new place, a new corner of YouTube is getting friendly pretty quickly. Hey cowboys out there, cowgirls, how y'all doing today? After only a month watching, our morning's routine starts with a market opening and we are going to the bed with their market closing. We are adding new terms to our vocabulary. Six-figure income, financial freedom, fast growth of capital, earnings per share. And these words seem to float around effortlessly in financial gurus' carefully constructed sentences. It all sounds great, but there is still that feeling. Something is not quite right. Something just falls off. But what is wrong? What is the most valuable asset? Attention. Your attention. That's where everything begins. Why is your attention so valuable? How much does it cost? On average, YouTube pays just $5 per 1,000 views. Not so much. But if we talk about a more lucrative niche, such as investment and finance, the reward for capturing your attention can be 5-10 times more. A little bit better. But still not enough to explain why gurus have floated into this niche. But their biggest source of income isn't YouTube money. That's just where the dirty games begin. 
The longer you stay on their channels, the more videos you watch and the more related content you see, the deeper they sink in their teeth. When you're hooked, it's much easier to make you do what they want. Either to watch the video till the end, or click the referral link in the description below, or buy the investment course. RyanSirhan.com slash course, or click the link right here in the description. It is going to change your life. Our goal is simply to condense the time that it takes for you to learn how to trade. Now you should get 41% off with the amazing programs on building your wealth link down below. And it's easy to hook people with empty promises of a better life. You watched more and more videos. You want to find a holy grail of passing income. You check numerous financial gurus YouTube channels, spend hours listening to them, trying to learn how to make the right investment decisions, how to invest in cryptocurrency or NFTs. And suddenly, you get a strange feeling that you somehow became addicted to their videos and they are leading you somewhere. But at the beginning, it doesn't look toxic or irritating. YouTubers just share their thoughts and financial advice free of charge. If you guys want to join my free trading group chat, it's 40,000 members, it's for free, it's the first link down in the description. But the truth is, there is no free lunch in the investment world. Even multi-billion financial firms have to make money in one or another way. Some firms charge transaction fees. Others like Robinhood sell all your orders and data to big money makers. Others like Betterment or Personal Capital give you free advice but only when you open and fund an account with them or when you reach specific quite significant investment thresholds and later they start charging you about a half percent every year. So your attention costs a lot. Your daily attention in a financial investment niche and as a prospective investors cost even more. That's why Google Ads charges advertisers from $25 to $100 for every click on financial-related searches. Just one click. But what is really ridiculous is that more and more companies and financial gurus are running more and more ads. They are being almost reckless with their advertising money. Wondering why? Because when they have hooked you, when you are in their sales funnel, you can bring them hundreds of thousands of dollars. Other big financial firms reported that the average LTV lifetime value of a retail customer in the financial industry is about $45,000. That's how much they can make off you in your lifetime. But maybe financial gurus are different breed in this cruel financial world. Believe it or not, some financial gurus can not only match brokerage firms' LTV, but can even surpass it. Their business expenses are much lower than any brokerage firms, so they are more than happy to give you all the advice they have for free, share their only today webinars and aggressively run ads. So do you still believe that this lunch is really free? Every day, Dozens of self-made experts and a copy-pasted financial gurus are getting millions of views and a new patrons. There you go. You can see 31 million views just in May. And the only difference between them is the niche and the size of their following. Somebody is pretending to be keen in crypto. About a year and a half ago, I put about $25,000 into crypto. Someone in stock trading or real estate do you folks want a course on real estate investing? I'm going to give you the seven steps you need to take to become a million dollar broker like me. Or in a day trading. But I'm going to walk you through the simplest day trading strategy for beginner traders. One of the most important factors to you making money from day trading. So what day trading strategy is most successful in the stock market? Are they declaring themselves the new goals of NFT and token investing? claiming they will lead their flock to a new era of prosperity and financial freedom. You can make and generate revenue from NFTs. Each of them claims to know their theme deeply, trying to make you believe that their niche is the fastest and surest way to prosperity. What's the quickest way from zero to 100 grand? Each of them is trying to explain what is happening in the market and what is going to happen next. If it comes down here, we have retraced to the 0.5 level. Everybody is promising to teach you how to invest. 
The only thing you need to do is just to subscribe. Click the like button and start enjoying entertaining business content. And make sure to subscribe. Here you go. And effortlessly became a greater and wealthier investor than Warren Buffett or Bill Ackman. But if you take a deep breath and pause for a second, you will see that all the financial YouTube content you are consuming could be very easily swept. Same patterns, same cliches, same clickbait titles and thumbnails. So actually, niche doesn't matter for them. Entertainment value, that the king now. But was financial YouTube always like this? When did it change so much and start serving other purposes? Personal finance and investing should be boring. Hi, my name is Peter Lynch. For 13 years, I managed Fidelity Magellan Fund. And it was before the rise of YouTube growth. Do you want to make 5, 10, 20x, 50x gains in crypto? This video is going to show you how to do it. More so, it's going to show you how to do it on your own. Everything you need to know about personal finance could be easily found in the book that professionals read to qualify as a certified financial analyst. But when you're born to be financial guru, or if you want to be financial YouTuber, you commit to upload schedule of a 10 million video every single day of every single week. Remember, they have to keep you on the hook. They want to ride the damn gravy train for as long as they can. And that's where we see all financial and investment YouTube in the ugliest light. All financial YouTubers spread their content across a few different broad categories. Reactions, predictions, and personal success stories. The least problematic of these formats – reaction videos. They're everywhere on YouTube, and they get a bit of a bad rap. For instance, Graham Stephan or Meet Kevin normally react to personal finance decisions and stupid mistakes made by other people with their money or investments. Hey everyone, Kevin here. Today I'm reacting to a video that was super hotly requested by you. Despite these videos being a bit repetitive, they aren't really doing any harm. And let's be honest, you don't watch these reactions to learn something new in a finance or investment related field. You're watching to see Dave Ramsey's reaction to other personal finance situations. <laughs> it's a light form of entertainment YouTubers offer to keep your attention. A much more harmful format of financial YouTube videos are predictions. Financial predictions are almost impossible to make. Even the largest financial firms with team of PhD quantitative analysts struggle to outperform regular market returns consistently, if at all. Meet the new Wall Street traders. Here, computers like these do the heavy lifting. Citadel's employees with PhDs in applied math, physics, and engineering build and refine the computer programs. It's therefore frustrating and I would say thrilling to see someone make predictions about the future of a highly volatile stock like Tesla before his audience. Obviously, the stock today is going kooky. <laughs> like... And yes, yes, I know. He gives the standard disclaimer. That's not financial advice. This is not financial advice. And this is not financial advice. This is not financial advice. But when a supposedly reputable figure that positions himself as a personal finance expert brings up an official earnings report and predicts 100% growth within the next 12 months, well, it's not unrealistic to see how some of his young audience would follow his not advice. And all of these personal finance personalities are guilty of giving this not advice piece of advice throughout all of their content. Let's be honest, all these indirect recommendations don't account for your personal situation and level of expertise, and a bad advice can easily lead to financial disaster. You know, they said that the cryptocurrency market was flourishing and that I was going to get a really big return. I couldn't believe it. You know, I'd used all my savings to fund this investment and they're gone. 2022, um, I pretty much lost all my money. She told me that it was all a scam and all I could do was just hug her. Good investments should not double overnight. They should instead continually provide value over many years or decades and return that value back to the investor steadily over the same time period. 
it's a terrible mistake to buy or sell stocks based on what you think business is going to do next month or next, uh, even next year. And the bad news here is that this is not going to make you rich as so many YouTube viewers hope for. You need to get rich and you need to get rich quick. I want to get a car. I do not have a car. My sisters do not have a car. And that brings us to the last type of concerning content, personal stories about financial guru's success. Now, just six months ago, I was sleeping with just $46,000 in my bank account. Who doesn't love a good story, especially when we hear them from a 25-old guy's financially prodigies? Now, I thought I would take a few moments of my day today to tell you about how I personally made a million dollars. People always ask me, how did you do it? What did you do? Because I went from broke to being worth over 10 million pounds in my 20s. I'm gonna show you how I went from being a broke, lonely real estate agent to being a big one with this huge team. Graham didn't get into university, meet Kevin Starr to be less than a thousand dollars, Dave Ramsey went totally bankrupt and the same is true for the rest of them. I was completely lost. I had lost my way, I had lost my purpose, I had lost any sense of myself. No one are turning around and saying, I studied like a crazy, got into a good university. I have been studying microplastics for over five years now. Then became a doctor or an investment banker. Why? Well, because it's much more entertaining and it sounds much more attainable to the average viewer. Because a boring financial story doesn't grab viewers' attention, doesn't soften you up so they cannot sell you courses or other products. And whether we like to admit it to ourselves or not, there is an element of, I watch these videos, I will learn to do what he did. That's how easy, boring, financial information easy becomes entertaining, how funny become easy to consume, how easy to consume become easy to sell. Now there is only one question left on the table. How do they reach in your pocket? Which of their sales offers will seem too good to pass up? And you will be surprised at three delicious poisoned apples they got ready for you. Courses subscriptions and mentorship, the holy trinity of every fake financial guru. Most of them are good salespeople. Sometimes YouTubers can sound like salespeople. First, the product most commonly used to upsell you is online course. If you're on the white side, you can teach people, give them cutting edge knowledge and many companies like Coursera use this approach. But there are those who are on the black side and use online courses for a completely different purpose. They use it as a way to lead you to even more expensive products. They overpromise, they lie. There is one easy trick to check if it's a fake course, mean to upsell you, or if it's a legit course from a trusted educational provider. Ask the financial guru, why do you sell your how to become a millionaire course, for instance, about by doing a day trading, real estate, investing in a penny stocks or whatever. Why you don't keep it in secret? I bet you they can't answer this question. If you're a millionaire, why sell a course? Okay. Um. And even if YouTube financial guru has hundreds of thousands of subscribers, even if they're pulling in ten to thirty thousand dollars a month from YouTube AdSense, this money is nothing compared to what they can make from selling their special useless courses. You're gonna have to work to be, you know, financially fit, and I am your trainer. You do realize the coupon code expires today, right? Link down below, programs on building your wealth. Another way to convert your valuable attention to real money, sell you a mentorship. I will personally mentor you for six months after the course is complete. This way is even more dangerous because you give them even more power over your money and actions. You may see offers like 30-day mentorship program from zero to one million portfolio or a golden platinum whatever closed mentorship group only for serious investors who are ready for big changes. I'm gonna teach you how to think like a millionaire. I'm gonna teach you the character of a millionaire. I'm gonna teach you how to become someone that doesn't just have financial results, but loves who they are. 
Usually, they challenge you with the name of these courses using superlative clickbait phrases. They sell it as a VIP club, as a gated community where only rich and successful investors live. Unfortunately, more and more people are falling into this trap, like some guy who pays $60,000 to Ty Lopez and Grant Cardone teaching him how to invest. That's nuts. And the last dot in this fake guru investment product triangle is a subscription-based model. It's common scam in the trading world where investment guru sells group membership or trade recommendations. It's usually something like join my Discord and buy our Trade Guru Pro subscription and you'll be rich. Be sure to join our brand new free Discord server called the Guac Talk community because as we all know, extra guac is truly a symbol of extra wealth. First of all, the Investment Advisors Act of 1940 make this illegal. It's a United States federal law that was created to regulate the actions of those giving investment advisors for compensation. In the US, you have to be a certified financial advisor to give financial advice. It's actually illegal to provide investment advice without being registered. You are considered an investment advisor and must register or face legal consequences if you receive compensation or you are in the business of offering advice or of advice to investors. And based on this law, any financial coaches or investment gurus definitely meet the second criteria of being an investment advisor, which is that you are engaged in the business of advising others. You'd think it would go without saying, but nobody really sells golden goose eggs. If someone had a 90% trade success rate, they would be cackling on the back of yard somewhere, drawing in a hookers and blow, not selling you 10 dank trades a month for $9.95. All of these services are scams, full stop. But you know what is funny about all these courses, mentorships and subscriptions? It absolutely doesn't matter what is inside of these products. The content doesn't matter. What really matters? How they market them. And are you ready to be even more shocked? It's all about marketing. It's all about triggering your emotions. That is going to change your perspective on life. You can create the success you need, you deserve for your life, your family, to be the hero in your life. This is a stage that separates the bottom of the barrel investment gurus from those who are actually making the big bucks, pretend to be Warren Buffett. It's all about marketing in this industry. And if you cannot market your course or mentorship program properly, then you're not gonna make as much money as you could. And gurus use one common scheme to attract people. They are selling financial freedom. How to turn your hard earned, all that work you're doing, all that hard effort into financial freedom. But what is the purpose of wealth? Well, the purpose of wealth is freedom. And this hook works equally well for each of their targets formers, young romantics, gamblers, people in vulnerable position and busy or simply lazy people. And let's be honest, each of us dreams big, wants to achieve something more and to have financial freedom. But what is it? What do you imagine when you hear these words? You buy the most expensive cars without worrying about the price. You travel the world enjoying your life and don't have a 9 to 5 job. So you can be financially free travel the world and never have to work for anyone ever again. You earn money effortlessly because you have a huge passive income. Did that cause your excitement? Do you feel how desperately you want this? If yes, they caught you. They're playing on the strings of your feelings. Their goal is to hook you in to dig into your emotions. And fake investment gurus want you to feel like, wait, 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 this guy is earning six figures by trading Bitcoin or penny stocks. He has fancy cars, enjoying his life, and has no job. I can do this as well. It's so easy. I just need to follow their advice. And here, you fall into the second mental trap. They sold you a dream built on their stories. They tell you how hard they had it before, 
how poor they were, how hard they struggled. Three years ago, I was making zero. And fast forward now, I made over a million dollars in profit. I wasn't always a millionaire, okay? Uh, once upon a time, I grew up in a small town, Orange, Connecticut. Then they started investing. They were so afraid to buy their first stocks, but they made many profitable trades, bought low and sold high. And now, now they know how everything works, and they are so very happy to share their priceless investment experience. All right, so today I'm taking 10 years worth of investing experience and I want to shrink it down into a quick 10 minute short video. Financial gurus try to make you think they know the answer long before you even know the question. That is why they try to post news review videos as fast as they can. So when you just read it, they already posted a video on this topic. But there is a hitch, a little glitch. They post videos only after the event has happened. It's much easier to explain something that is to predict it. Because if you could predict, you would be like Warren Buffett. And do you know of a single YouTube financial guru who's earned even a half of what Warren Buffett has? No, neither do I. So why do people buy fake gurus courses instead of Warren Buffett's book that costs about 20 bucks on Amazon? Because Buffett's way seems hard. It's not quick, it's not simple, it's not fully proof. With investment courses from Goose, there is a fine line and an all-important question that must be asked. Where is the majority of their revenue coming from? The actual selling of the courses or membership products to new customers or they're actually making profitable investment decisions? Are they getting rich of their audience or are they getting rich on their own advice. Is there any way to protect yourself from fake investment rules or at least stop them? Do investors learn from their past? And the honest answer may not be so obvious. Profiting from people's emotions, from their desire to earn big money, it's not a new thing. Stories about the fast way to become a millionaire are dated back to 7th century. Time has passed. The 20th century arrived and people got smarter, but not quite smart enough. Well-respected financier Bernie Madoff was one of the most famous scammers. He sold people a classic pyramid scheme and convinced thousands of investors to hand over their life savings, falsely promising consistent profits in return. The concept of these new types of systems is to make it easier and more cost-effective for people to trade. Madoff was a master marketer who throughout the 1970s and the 1980s built a reputation as a wealth manager for a highly exclusive clientele, a kind of VIP club. Investors who gained access typically on word-of-mouth referral believed they had entered the inner circle of a money-making genius. I invested because uh, some very successful friends of mine uh, recommended him uh, because of the consistency of his, of his return. And I, like almost everybody, got in through referral. But what about investment gurus of that time who helped make this pyramid scheme possible? They even didn't have a YouTube yet. Made have worked the so-called Jewish circuit, over well-heeled Jews he met at country clubs. There were other people, Stanley Chains, one of the Madoff's oldest friends, or Ezra Merkin, a prominent investment advisor who was sued for his role in promoting and running a feeder fund for Madoff. Madoff managed to fly under the radar for a very long time because he was an active member of the financial industry. He helped launch the Nasdaq stock market. People trusted him. They thought he was a true financial guru and know what he was doing. Looks familiar again, right? But even in a 2022, the line between good and a bad financial guru and YouTuber, between love and hate, between sharing your investment ideas publicly and becoming the target of SAC investigation is so thin. And I also remember very well that in 2021, a YouTuber with a 2 million subscribers told his viewers that he sold 99% of his investment portfolio worth $20 million. And the crash is coming. Now, uh, I've sold 99.15% of my stocks and my entire crypto portfolio. 
And that was a shock, because just two days ago, he said that he was still buying the dip. But that's okay, he can still buy the dip now, just a lot less of the dip, <laughs> because I get less dollars. And when one day a person is telling people to buy, and the very next day he is literally giving the exact opposite advice, it makes people feel betrayed and, unsurprisingly, angry. So can the Security Exchange Commission stop financial YouTubers from such actions? To be honest, I'm not sure. So when they are leaders of thoughts with the attention of millions, they should mean you have an obligation to be responsible for your words. But what really baffles me, if it's total illegal for a medical doctor to provide treatment on YouTube, why is it still legal for entertainers, young, fast-talking YouTubers influence our financial situations?